we'll move on to Vamp Willow, the bisexual vampire. <laughs> <laughs> so as a side note, I'll probably get up a co- get mentioned a few times, but episode 19 of I Spin in Your Podcast, we talked all about this subject. So if you want more and you're really curious about this, then please go listen to that. There's also some really wonderful articles out there uh, to touch on. And it's going to sound like a broken record, but I love first impressions. But what were your first impressions of Willow as a vampire? Oh, I loved Vamp Willow as well. Like when she first came on the scene. And I always love that because it's like, it's always the nice, quiet girls (laughs) who always have like the super dark side. Yes. (laughs) When they go bad, they go bad. Yeah, they don't have acid. Uh, I I felt the same way as you two. I was so pumped because I just I just love seeing characters in just like in a different way in a different light and just seeing what they would be like as a vampire and i'm going to go now to that in doppelgangland so when that spell kind of goes wrong and then our vamp willow comes into the regular sunnydale universe so this is when everybody's all together looking at uh, vamp willow so rupert giles says it's extraordinary and willow says it's horrible that's me as a vampire. I'm so evil and skanky. And I think I'm kind of gay. Well, I just remember a vampire's personality has nothing to do with the person it was. Well, actually, it's a good point. But we know what he was going to say is like, well, actually, there's a lot <laughs> of the human personality left in there. But of course, you know, mm-hmm. they just get all evil it's like the evil twin but there's still a lot of their own selves in there which brings up an interesting point so i kind of wanted to break this down into two things which was her first point is that she's evil and skanky which is going to there's going to be a lot of similarities between these women um so you know thinking about veruca evil and also apparently skanky and Mm -hmm. you know because she has that allure in that kind of exudes that kind of femininity and sexual vibe and energy that a lot of men are really interested in in the Sunnydale verse because we've seen that in those episodes so here we are as evil vampy willow and she just exudes sex let's just you know we can just talk about that leather outfit for one yeah. moment Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know she's uh She's confident. She's the aggressor. She wears all black. So, of course, when you become a vampire, you have to wear leather. And that's kind of how that's kind of for me, like the running joke in the in Sunnydale, like Angel, when he turns into Angelus, it's just like that's when the leather pants come out. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank God. (laughs) Right. You know, and you know, Spike always has his leather jacket and Mm -hmm. leather pants, which is always something, but it's just like this leather, (laughs) that leather thing that uh, (laughs) like goes hand in hand. So like in Sunnydale, sluttiness or skankiness is akin to being evil. They kind of just go together. And again, our evil, very openly sexual women need to be stopped. So thoughts on that, evil and skanky? Not that I'm calling you evil and skanky, sorry. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Maybe Jess. Um, Jeez. <laughs> and it's, everyone it's, burst out laughing hearing that. They're like, what? <laughs> it's it's so fascinating to me because I totally understand what you're saying and I actually completely agree with it. And then the other side to it is uh, I always think of when it comes to the treatment of female characters, are the men treated in a similar way? Mm -hmm. And if they are, I'm personally perfectly okay with it. Mm -hmm. So if it was only like the female vampires that um, became really sexy and dressed in leather and then the guys were just kind of the same, Mm -hmm. uh, I could totally understand. But as you said, like Angelus and Spike, they're obviously also incredibly sexy and Mm -hmm. also wear leather and are also evil Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting because I agree with you, but I also see the mm-hmm. other side to it. Yeah, that's a great point. I That's a great point that it's very even if you look at it from that point of view and look at just vampires in general. Um, and then you can also see that a lot of vampire uh, sexuality is very fluid. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really, they don't really care who you are, who you are. You're full 
pumped full of blood. It's there's it's there's the sensuality of it, the romanticism of it. So they're just into everyone. Yes. About being evil and skanky. Evil and skanky. <laughs> My new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think when it comes to, like, when we look at vampires and vampirism, like, what they what they represent to us is, like, the the dark fetish and dark fantasies of sexuality, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and in our, like, society, and I could definitely see in Sunnydale, like, people aren't comfortable with sexuality. Mm-hmm. Just not. And then to have it kind of, like, be kind of brought, like, put forth in in your face by like these vampires who dress very sexy like you know will like you said in the leather and then like the corset and mm-hmm. she's like exposing and she's also very sexual in her mannerism and the way she talks and touches things and mm-hmm. even like when you'll think later too like with like drusilla and even like spike and that just makes people feel uncomfortable and so when people feel uncomfortable with something it's better to like try and you take a binary aspect to it and mm-hmm. say well I'm uncomfortable, so that means this is bad. So that's bad, so then you're evil. Mm-hmm. So then you're evil, you dress like an evil person, you act like an evil person, because I'm uncomfortable. And so this is and this is where we end up labeling people as, like, good or evil, and that's why, like, we end up seeing with Willow, like, she has to choose whether she's good or evil um, in her, um, and we'll talk about, like, her sexuality mm-hmm. and her choices. Mm-hmm. Because, like, she can't be bisexual, or she's evil. <laughs> Yeah. Because vampires are bisexual <laughs> and evil. <laughs> we don't we don't see other female vampires outside of Drusilla and Darla, right? Like we get like the odd crony type vampire yeah. that's like a yeah. one hit monster, but like our main forerunners are like Drusilla and Darla, and they're always portrayed as like they're evil, like mm-hmm. just straight up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very and, true. And, and I'm sh- I'm sure we'll hopefully talk about Drusilla in the future, mm-hmm. and I better be there for that episode because she's my favorite character. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, it's fascinating her past. You know, mm-hmm. w- before she was evil, she was very pure. And then the second she's evil, she's not. So, yeah, it's 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 really interesting. But then Darla is the opposite. And again, I'm sure we'll talk about this for a while um, at some point. But I don't know. I will say to that point, you know, and you make really, really great points. Uh, I will say, though, uh, in season six with Dark Willow, though she is not as... Oh, necessarily overtly sexual definitely not in her dress she's very dressed up um dressed like literally it's almost like a turtleneck that she's wearing so there's that but um i think well for sure she she flirts with dawn which in itself is a huge taboo with our age difference and during that season uh willow and tara become kind of like pseudo parents to her. So there's a lot of Mm. kind of Mm. incestuous elements to that, that I don't think a lot of people talk about or necessarily realize, Mm. but she does have some inappropriate uh, behavior. And uh, during her time as dark willow, 